Hare Krishna, everyone. Welcome back once again to our ever ongoing series on the glories of our most beloved Sri Vrindavan Dham. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swamini Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Goravani Pacharine Nibhishesha Shunyavadi Pastrita Deshatarane. I offer my obeisances to my spiritual master who gave me beautiful Kuntimala, effulgent tilak, the beautiful form of a devotee, and who offered me his shelter. In one of his hands, he is holding my hand, and with his other hand, he is holding the lamp of knowledge, which helps me to cross over the dark ocean of the material world. <clears throat> Surdas says, my guru deserves the greatest respect because only he can rescue one in the blinking of an eye. I bow down to him again and again. Shudra Prabhupada Ki. So we're continuing with our mini-series on uh, stimulation for ecstatic love, and this will be part 35. Previously, we discussed the different ornaments of Krishna in three parts. Today, we will be discussing the ornaments of Srimati Radharani. Of course, Discussing such topics requires a lot of research. Uh, one scholar wrote, finding uh, treasures of rasa in the nectar ocean of Krishna is as rare as finding a pearl in the ocean when the current is high. I read that. But by the mercy of our uh, previous acharyas, we have such information at our fingertips. Therefore, uh, Gopal Kavi, a famous Vrindavan scholar, he writes about such acharyas as ours in his book, Vrindavan Dhamma Anu Raghavali. He writes, Sadagrantana ko shara shakala, lehashtamal main kanush. They churned thousands of scriptures with their own hands and gave us pots filled with sweet nectar and love. One of the best examples of these pots of nectar is Srila Rupa Goswami's Radha Krishna Gonadesha Deepika, wherein he gives us a list of Srimati Radharani's precious ornaments. Generally, we think of ornaments, well, when we think of ornaments, we think in the sense of you know, gold rings, silver necklaces, pearl necklaces, etc. But you may remember that we mentioned in a previous class, when such shringara, which means ornaments, are not available, then flowers can be used as a substitute, and they're not considered inferior in any way. Rupa Goswami writes again in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 21361, Kushamadi Kritam Chedam, Vanya Mamdanam Iritam, Tato Kliptam Tilakam, Patabanga Lata Dikam. When these same ornaments of jewels are made using flowers, they are known as banya mandana, or forest decorations. We quoted that uh, last week. But he confirms the same in verses 139 and 140 of Radha Krishna Gunadesha Deepika. Therein he writes, in their forms, varieties, and so forth, the ornaments made of flowers are no less than the ornaments made of jewels, gold, and other precious metals. So twice confirmed. <laughs> so the special service of decorating Shirada with flower ornaments, we'll first discuss that, is called Pushpesha Man Dhanam. And this particular seva is under the jurisdiction of Lalita Saki. She's in charge. Rupa Goswami writes in uh, Lalita Ashtakam, Verse 2, I offer my respects unto Sri Lalita Devi, whose beautiful face mocks the brilliance of the full moon, whose eyes are ever restless like those of a startled doe, who is famous for her extraordinary expertise in the art of dressing Srimati Radharani, who is the treasure house of unlimited feminine qualities. So Lalita has a very intimate service to Sri Radha. Now, this dressing and ornamenting of Srimati Radharani 
under the supervision of Lalita Saki, doesn't uh, take place just once a day, if we might assume, but ten times a day at the following times. First of all, when Shirada rises before dawn, then again after dawn, then um, she's ornamented again when she cooks for Krishna, then after cooking for him, then before going out to meet uh, Krishna late in the morning, and then, oh yeah, when she changes clothes for bathing, and again after bathing, then when she pre uh, prepares to go out at night to meet Krishna, then when she changes clothes for bathing at night, and finally after bathing at night, ten times her ornaments are changed by her servants, her manjaris and sakis. So, the flower ornaments that Lalita instructs the gopis to use in decorating Shirada are as follows. This information is given to us by Sri Rupa Goswami. Um, those ornaments, flower ornaments, are crowns called kirtitas, hair bands, they're called balapashas, ear ornaments, flower ear ornaments, karnapuras, uh, flower forehead decorations, lalatikas, uh, necklaces, raive yakshas, uh, upper, upper arm bracelets, angadash, waist belts, uh, kanchis, ankle bells, floral ankle bells, katakash, uh, floral uh, bangles, uh, mani bandanis, um, feet decorations called hamshakash, and bodhises called kanchulis, and then Rupa says, and many, many uh, other such floral ornaments. But it's interesting. All these ornaments are, uh, again, made of, out of flowers. And after listing these specific flower ornaments, Rupa Goswami gives detailed information what makes up each of these flower decorations. Now this is all quite detailed, but of course, uh, love is in the details. <laughs> As far as Radha's flower crowns are concerned, uh, they're made up by joining flowers of different colors together. Which flowers? Well, um, there's the Rangini flower, which is a blue color. There's the Sarva Yuti flower, which is a, a golden color. There's the Nava Malika flower, which is of a white color. Uh, the Sumalika flower, which um, yeah, the color resembles uh, rubies, so like that. Her, her crowns are made from these type of flowers or, or in their respective colors. Now next is um, Shibata's hair bands, Balapasya. They're made by uh, stringing together a garland of various colorful flower buds. Not just flowers, but flower buds. Again, Pajari's take note. Then her um, flower ear ornaments. Rupa Goswami says that her flower ear ornaments are of five types. <laughs> this is really detailed, but it's pure nectar. Her flower ear ornaments, like her earrings, are made of five types. Uh, the first one is called tatankas, and they look like palm leaves and are of two kinds. They're either made of uh, many colored flowers or the petals of the golden ketaki flower. Then the second type of flower ear ornament is kundalas, which are flower ornaments <coughs> which resemble peacocks, sea creatures called makaras, lotuses, and half moons. Then there's pushpis. Pushpis are earring ornaments made by stringing together four types of different colored flowers in sequence in the form of a round shape, he describes. And in the middle of these ear ornaments also hangs a cluster of gunja berries. Hmm. Then Rupa says, Karnikas. Karnikas are made by stringing yellow flowers around a lotus flower. And then uh, bringi flowers and pomegranate flowers are stitched in the middle. I think if, if you can just vision these in your mind's eye, it makes it easier to understand <laughs> from the description. Then, uh, Karna best anams. These are round flower earrings that cover the whole ear. 
like that. So those are the five kinds of earring ornaments. Now another special kind of ornament that Sri Radha wears is called a lalatika. Lalatika. And lalatikas are made of two uh, colors of flowers and are fastened on the top of her head along the parting of her hair in the middle. You can just imagine the top of her head, but along the part uh, in the middle of her head. Lalatika, two kinds of flowers. Then another flower, another flower ornament is Sri Radha's necklace. It's called a Graveya Kam. And Rupa Goswami writes that it's an ornament made with only one kind of flower and beautified in the middle by vines and leaves. By vines and leaves. Then there's uh, Sri Radha's armlet, which she wears on her upper arm uh, above the elbow. Now, Sri Rupa writes that this ornament is made by stringing three different colored flowers together, one by one, uh, into the form of a round creeper. I think someone would have to show us how to do that. <laughs> Maybe one day they will in the spiritual world. Then there's a flower waist belt, you know. If there's no jeweled waist belt available, then the gopis make a flower waist belt. It's called a kanchi. And this is described as an astonishing, Rupa writes, an astonishing decoration made of five different kinds of colorful flowers and adorned with small wavy garlands. <laughs> Those are his words. An astonishing decoration made of uh, five different kinds of colorful flowers and adorned with small wavy garlands. I'm trying to imagine that, you know, small little wavy garlands. And then... Uh, Anklets, flower anklets, are called kataka, kataka. And these anklets are made by stringing together many kinds of flower buds and stems of fruits or leaves using the fine stalk, using fine stalk as the thread. You know, the stalk of the, of the plant can be wo used to wo uh, wove these different types of um, uh, flowers, small buds and um, fruits and leaves. So then, uh, it was mentioned earlier, flower bracelets, uh, mani bandini. Now, mani bandinis are made with uh, flowers of four different colors, with three flower strings hanging down from it. Okay? And uh, these mani bandinis are tied around Sri Radha's wrist. And we continue with all these details because we're getting prepared to go back home, back to Godhead, <laughs> and serve the divine couple in the kunjas. Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari. Then, uh, ornaments for her lotus feet. Hamshaka, it's called Hamshaka. Now these Hamshakas cover the entire top part and, si and side part of Sri Radha's lotus feet. And they're beautifully constructed with small strings made of the buds of uh, tiny flowers. Then Rupa Goswami continues, because he's our Rastacharya. Then there's a flower blouse, we mentioned earlier, a flower blouse. It's called Kanchuli. Kanchuli is the name of Radha's flower blouse. And Sri Rupa Goswami describes it as, um, a, as a highly uh, enticing flower decoration, skillfully made of six different colored flowers. I like the language he uses highly enticing flower decoration, skillfully made of six different colored flowers. And listen to this. It's scented with the fragrance of musk and is fastened around Sri Radha's neck with flower strings. You know, usually we string the flowers. We, we have a string and then we string the flowers. <laughs> and this is fastened around Radha's neck with flower strings. I can't imagine. There's so many things we'll discover as we advance in Krishna consciousness. Then Rupa Goswami describes an umbrella, a chatram, it's called chatram, and flower umbrellas. Remember, every, everything we're discussing now is made out of flowers, flower ornaments. Flower umbrellas are made by attaching strings of white flowers to thin wooden rods and decorating the wooden handle because you hold an umbrella with a handle with golden juhi flowers. Golden juhi flowers. 
Then, uh, flower bed, flower bed, uh, sayanam. In other words, what Sri Radha lies on. And for this, uh, a wide mattress is made of strings of navamaliki flowers, as well as tender chameli flowers. That's what the mattress is made of. And Sri Radhika's pillow is made by joining champak and ashok flowers and a huge quantity of malika, chameli flowers. Wow. <laughs> All glories to Sri Rupa Goswami. Then there's an awning, it's called ulocha, ulocha. And an ulocha is prepared by making a lattice-like design, he describes, with strings of variegated fresh malika flowers. And attached to them are petals of the ketaki flowers. <laughs> the walls of the awning are made of radiant strings of pearl-like sinduvara flowers. What is a sinduvara flower? I can't wait to see. The walls of the awning are made of radiant strings of pearl-like sinduvara flowers and garlands made of freshly uh, blooming lotus flowers hanging down from the middle. I think you have to listen to this class a few times to really imbibe um, and hopefully memorize one day all these uh, details in serving uh, Srimati Radharani. Then Rupa Goswami concludes this list of Radhika's flower ornaments with a, a, a hut, uh, it's called a, a hut, excuse me, a hut, Veshma, where, where, you know, where, where she can rest in. He said, many kinds of huts can be destructed uh, it constructed, many kinds of huts can be constructed by using various flowers to decorate four pillars made of reeds, decorated on all sides with strings of various kinds of flowers. So there you go. Sri Rupa Goswami has given us a de detailed description of ornaments made with flowers worn by Sri Radha, as described in his Radha Krishna Gonadesha. Deepika. But of course, um, Sri Radha obviously wears traditional ornaments as well. One erudite scholar, the poet Ananta Das, describes um, some of these uh, jewels, jeweled ornaments, very nicely in his book called Shevanishta, which we found in the uh, Vrindavan Research Institute. Shevanishta. Now, Ananta Das was a well-known Vrindavan poet in the um, late 17th century. And he was initiated in the line of Gadadhar Pandit. And he wrote in the Braj Bas language. If I had time, I'd love to learn the Braj Bas language. <laughs> Sometimes the devotees say, you know, you were preaching in France, you should have learned French. You're in Poland, you should learn uh, Polish. No. If I'm going to learn any second language, it's going to be Brajbasa. <laughs> That'll help me on the path home back to Goloka. So this, this poet, Ananta Das, um, he, he was very erudite, and he wrote in the Brajbasa language. Now we're quoting him because well, Sri Prabhupada writes in Srimad Bhagavatam 1, 1, 1, that within the, fi within the past 500 years, Many erudite scholars and acharyas like Jiva Goswami, Shanatan Goswami, uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, Balabhacharya, and many other distinguished scholars, even after the time of Lord Chaitanya, made elaborate commentaries on the Bhagavatam. Means some we know and some we don't know. And the serious student would do well to attempt to go through them, to better relish the transcendental messages. So we're often quoting these various poets and scholars as long as the, their tattva and their rasa is in line with our Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition because generally we're, I mean, I'm always quoting um, Vrindavan poets, so like that. So this uh, Ananta Das. So in his uh, Sevanishta, he writes that in Braj, it's very interesting, all the Sakis and Manjaris engage in pleasing Shimati Radharani in different modes of service, behind a curtain before she gives darshan in the morning. <laughs> and 
such services are classified as follows. I found this very interesting. What are the various services which the residents of Goloka Vrindavan, or when they come here, Gokul Vrindavan, offer to Srimati Radharani? This is more interesting than the evening news, who won the football match, you know, what are the capitals of the different countries of the world. This is how we should apply our intelligence. So such services are classified as follows. In Sri Radhika's Seva. The service of flowers. The service of uh, ornaments. The service of perfumes. The service of outfits. The service of showing the mirror. The service of painting the face. The service of offering the items mentioned above. The service of offering bital. The service of rearranging such items. And the service of taking care of the items mentioned. And these 10 services are done by 10 different groups uh, of servants of Radha. You know, there'll be someone in charge, but you know, there'll be 10 servants. And I can mention those respectively, the different groups that take care of these uh, services. The service of flowers is done by the uh, Malinis, that particular group of gopis. The service of ornaments is done by her sakis. The service of perfumes is done by the manjaris. The service of outfits, the kinkaris, that group of gopis take care of the service of outfits. The service of mirrors, there's a service of mirrors, is done by the dasis, Ananta says. The service of painting faces is the sehacharis. And the service of offering the above, above items, you know, overseeing all that, is done by the nija dasis. And the service of offering betel nut is the ailis. And the service of uh, rearranging, <laughs> putting those items back where they came from is done by the priyasakis. And the service of taking, uh, uh, of acquiring all these items mentioned is done by the anu charinis. So there you go. <laughs> and it all begins in the morning after um, after Sri Radhika takes her bath and she's dressed, then uh, she sits on a golden throne. She bathes and she's dressed by her confidential servants. And then she sits on a golden throne. And eight huge mirrors framed in gold are situated in a circle around her. And there's a huge chandelier named uh, Shastra Deepavali. It means the thousand lamps, which is hanging over this golden throne to, to light it up. <clears throat> and next to the throne, there's a table called Shringaravedi. Shringaravedi, meaning, uh, well, the table of Shringar. Shringar again means ornaments, table of ornaments. So this table itself is filled with golden boxes, studded with gems in the shapes of a fish, uh, a makara, means a, a, a creature similar to crocodiles, uh, peacocks, a, a turtle, or a mango. Interesting boxes. And these boxes are filled with perfumed oils, red lac, corellium, kunkum, minerals of different colors, silver and golden glitter. Wow. So, silver and golden, golden litter, and bark from a tree called Mahima, and turmeric and sandalwood powder. Now, why? Well, because all these maidservants of Sri Radha, they will utilize these things in, in, her, in her seva. So beautiful. And a pot with um, different silver and golden thin sticks to paint and decorate her is on the table. Uh, filled with uh, flowers and jewels. Now there's, uh, uh, I was reading, a group, of, uh, a group of seven gopis nearby playing soothing music with ten instruments. A pakawaja, which is a, a type of drum. Uh, jala yantra, ten different ceramic bowls filled with uh, levels of water. Shorangi, it's a, Shorangi is a 100-stringed instrument. 
Kachapi Vena, it's, um, uh, just, it's a, tur- a turtle-shaped Vena, I was reading. Kachapa vi- Kachapi Vena, a turtle-shaped Vena. Manjura, it says, it's described kartals. Vena, a lute. Maridanga, a smaller type of drum. We're familiar with Maridangas. Shagara, uh, it's an instrument that gives sounds like the waves of the ocean. Wow, Shagara. It's an instrument that uh, sounds like the waves uh, of the ocean. Then there's uh, handbells and a shontur, a stringed instrument. Now as Shibata sits on that golden throne, the gopis be- employ all these different ornaments in service to her. They begin decorating her. Firstly, they dry her hair with the smoke of cow dung and aguru, a beautiful type of perfume that we worship in the we use in the worship of our deities, actually. Then they make her hair shiny with jasmine, almond, and amala oil. Then they tie Shivatika's hair in a long braid, which appears uh, like a moving snake, embedded with diamonds and pearls. <laughs> they tie Shivata's hair with a long braid, which appears like a moving snake, embedded with diamonds and pearls. Then they put bakula and champak flowers in her hair. And then uh, it's described sometimes they tie her hair up in a knot and the poet says sometimes they liberate her hair from the bounds of salt silken strings. Meaning they let her hair loose. (laughs) I had to think for a minute when I first read it. They liberate her hair from the bounds of soft silken strings. They let her hair loose. Then after putting red lac on Radha's hands and feet, they offer her countless necklaces. Countless necklaces. And that done, they tie a knot of all the strings of those necklaces falling behind her back in the shape of a black cuckoo. There's something for your mind's eye. All these countless necklaces. They tie a knot of the strings of those necklaces, which you know, the strings fall behind her back in the shape of a black cuckoo. Then to ward off any evil eyes, you know, people look at her, I don't know, any eye, anyway, to ward off any evil eyes, they call out, Balahari, 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 which means, may the energy of the evil eye on you come on us, come on us. These are her surrendered servants. Then they circle her seven times with a golden pot filled with water, and afterwards they drink that water. It's a ritual I was reading for removing evil eyes. (laughs) Then they show her um, hand mirrors from eight sides. You know, they're holding the, the, the mirror in their hands. They show her hand mirrors from eight sides, which reflect countless images of her in the bigger mirrors which are around the room. And at this point, they place a beautiful uh, mm, uh, blue lotus in her hand and fix cotton saturated with different uh, perfumes behind her ears. Then they move her to a Mayura Ashvana. From the golden throne, the gopis move Shiradika to a Mayura Ashvana. So what's a Mayura Ashvana? It's a peacock throne a peacock throne, decorated with colorful, uh, with a colorful jeweled canopy and curtains. Um, next, they fan Sri Radha with feathers and whisk tail fans, then singing in loud voices, Jai Ho, Jai Ho, Jai Ho. They, the gopis open the curtains for darshan. <laughs> while Alita Devi comes forward and offers, or it says, waves a golden plate with lamps on it. And at this point, the residents of Vrindavan, particularly Varshana, they stand for Arti, for Arti. While, what? Well, Krishna pays his obeisances unto the lotus feet of Sri Radha again and again and again. So our poet, Ananta Dasi, says, one who hears the description of the Sringara of Shimati Radharani 
will attain the intense urge to serve the divine couple in their eternal pastimes by the mercy of Guru and Vaishnavas. Hare Krishna, by the mercy of Sridhar Prabhupada, we can attain this by His grace only. Wow. So now we've heard about Shivada's flower ornaments as well as her, how could I say, traditional ornaments. And a very beautiful description of all these ornaments taken together, combined together, is given by Srila Raghunath Das Goswami in his book, Shtavavali, in the section called uh, Premam Bhoja Maranda. And actually, Srila Prabhupada quotes this book in Chaitanya Charitamrita, this particular section actually, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Maji Lila 8, 166. So therein, it's said, it's, it's, it's esoteric, but it's, it's nice to meditate on how he speaks about these ornaments, Raghunath Das Goswami. He writes, Shirada's ornaments embody the natural symptoms of ecstasy. Trembling, tears, jubilation, stunning, perspiration, faltering of the voice, uh, bodily redness, madness, and dullness. In this way, her entire body is bedecked with these nine different jewels. Over and above this, the beauty of her body is enhanced by her transcendental qualities, which hang as a flower garland on her body. Over and above this, he writes, the beauty of her body is enhanced by her transcendental qualities, which hang as a flower garland on her body. Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, he. Now, it's interesting to note here that not only the gopis dress Sri Radha in beautiful ornaments, Sringara, but sometimes Krishna does as well. This Krishna does uh, at the famous pastime place called Sringaravat. Perhaps some of you have visited it. It's also known as Nityanandavat. It's actually off the Purkama mark, the Purkama path that goes around Vrindavan. Sringaravat. Srila Vishnav Chakravarti Thakur, he writes in uh, Brajriti Chintamani, um, verse 82. He refers to this particular holy place. He writes, he writes, in the grove named Sringara Shanti, Krishna decorated his beloved under a vata tree, a vata tree is a, a, a banyan tree, named Sringara Vata, which can be seen and glorified even today. In the grove named uh, Sringara Shanti, Krishna decorated his beloved under a vata tree named Sringara Vata, which can be seen and glorified even today. And as I mentioned, it, you can go there. And uh, in Bhakti, I found in Bhakti Ratnakara fifth wave, Sri Narahari Chakravarti also refers to this special place where Krishna decorated Sri Radha. He writes in the fifth wave. This is Sringaravata, where Krishna decorated Radhika in different ways. So my dear illustrious godbrother, Shivaram Maharaj, he relates this particular pastime of Krishna decorating um, Srimati Radharani very nicely in his Navabraja Mahima. He says that, um, uh, he summarizes the pastime very beautifully. Uh, he writes, uh, one time at Sringaravat, Radha and Krishna were uh, sitting together under this banyan tree, Sringaravata, which, is, which we quoted there in that verse. And they were so absorbed in their pastimes that they lost track of time. So suddenly, Vrinda Devi, who along with uh, Mother Purnamasi, as you know, is in charge of uh, arranging all, all Vrindavan pastimes, Vrinda Devi arrived. So seeing them, the couple together under this beautiful uh, tree, she said to Radha and Krishna, Dear ones, you're going to be late for the rasa dance this afternoon. So Radharani immediately became angry with Krishna. <laughs> she said, Krishna, you've lost track of time. We're going to be late for the rasa dance. It means all my gopi uh, friends will miss out on your transcendental association. Now when I read that, you know, I, I, I remember that this is the compassionate nature of Srimati Radharani. 
Prabhupada describes in Chaitanya Charitamrita that Radharani is such a great devotee that she takes 10,000 times more pleasure engaging others in Krishna's service than doing the service herself. So we see that in her statement. My gopi friends are going to miss out because we're late. <laughs> then she said, Krishna, just look at me. Because it was late in the day, her clothes had become uh, wrinkled and her hair uh, was a little disheveled in this pastime. Sringaravad. So she said, how am I going to show up at the rasa dance looking like this? So Krishna smiled and he reassured her, Devi, let me arrange these things. Let me put on your makeup. Let me decorate you with all these um, gold, diamond, ruby, and sapphire ornaments that are placed here by your, by your sakis. And I promise you, it won't take more than a minute. So then, you know, Lalita, she's fiery by nature. She's always trying to protect Shirada from Krishna if he gets out of hand. So she said, you know, Radha, he's just a boy. He's a cowherd. We gopis can do better than him. But Radharani, in her heart of hearts, wanted Krishna to decorate her. So she said, all right, Krishna, do it nicely. <laughs> So taking charge, Krishna asked a number of gopis to go to different places and get more jewels and ornaments and bracelets and bangles, etc. So all the gopis ran off and they quickly came back with all kinds of paraphernalia. They just have to go to the storehouses of Devi. We know that Devi has storehouses of whatever is required for Radha and Krishna's seva all over Vrindavan in the forest. So they don't have to like scout it out and ask where it is. They know. It's all there for Krishna's save. And they can also go to desire trees called Pravikshas. I need a sapphire, I need a ruby, I need a pearl necklace for the save of Radha and Krishna. And those things just fall from the tree because the tree is also Brajabhasi. So when Krishna saw all this paraphernalia, paraphernalia, he was very happy. I was reading, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur writes that, this is so interesting, Every devotee has his worshipable deity. We all have our worshipable deities. Every devotee has his worshipable deity whom he loves to serve in so many ways. And Krishna, although he's God, also has his wor worshipable deity. And who's that? Vrindavaneshwari, Srimati Radharani. So he was very happy. So understandably, it's described, Krishna took a long time to decorate Sri Radha. It took a long time. And when he finished, he stepped back and all the gopis, they went, oh, such beautiful dressing you've done. You're a boy, Krishna, but you have done such beautiful dressing. Then Vishaka whispered something in the ear of, of Lalita and Lalita stood up and said, on this very day, under this banyan tree, here at Sringaravat, we declare this cowherd boy Krishna to be the emperor of Pujaris. <laughs> the emperor of Pujaris. Then everyone looked at Radharani. Her transcendental beauty, her effulgence, and all her divine qualities, and appreciated how expertly Krishna had decorated her with Sringar jewels and ornaments at Sringaravat. You have to go there on your next Parikrama Prabhus on in Vrindavan. Then Tungavidya, of course one of the Sakis, came forward and offered Radharani a mirror. So Radharani took that mirror and she looked at her reflection and smiled and just by her smile everyone's heart became pacified. Because this is bhakti. Bhakti means to give more than you take. And the gopis are giving everything to Radha and Krishna. So when they see Krishna, or in this particular case, <laughs> Radha, that's their happiness. And one day that should become our happiness as well. Atmanivedana. So Radharani, she smiled and everyone's heart became pacified. So then Radharani said, oh, we're late. Let's go for the Rasa dance. And everyone, including Krishna, went over to a place called 
Nikunjavana, Nikunjavana, where other gopis were waiting impatiently for the rasa dance. And when they all arrived, the gopis who had been waiting for Sri Radha looked at Radharani and said to each other, Radharani looks especially beautiful today. Who dressed her? And when, how can I say, word got out that Krishna had dressed her, all those gopis smiled and agreed that indeed Krishna was the emperor of Pujaris. Hare Krishna. <laughs> so I would like to end, I don't want to end, but we're up here on the Baltic Sea coast again, you know, with our festival of India, and I have to get out on Sankirtan, and we have a festival this evening as well, festival every day actually. So I'd like to end today's lecture with a poem by Surdas, you know Surdas, we've quoted him many times, wherein he states that nothing can compare to the beauty of Srimati Radharani. He says, her beauty puts everything else to shame. Anything that's extraordinarily beautiful um, is put to shame in a nice way by Radharani's beauty. He writes as follows. Mother Yasoda says, O Radha, your face is like the moon. Why do you not hide it, O beautiful daughter of King Rishabhanu? By keeping it exposed, you are causing anguish to so many creatures. The deer suffers from it even though there are no hunter's arrows to give it pain. Have you no compassion? The lotus is sad, along with the bee shut inside it. And so are the kanchan and chikora birds. Please cover up the light of your countenance so that the moon may become happy again. The poet Sirdas says, O lovely moon-faced Radha, why put them all to shame? So thank you, Prabhu. We... Um, we will have another class on the um, divine ornaments of Srimati Radharani uh, next Friday. I'm already preparing that. So, yes, thank you so much. All glories to Sridhar Prabhupada, the revealer of the Dham, the reveal of all these things to all of us as faithful followers. Shishi Gorni Tai Ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram Ki, Shishi Radha Shama Sundar Ki, Brindavaneshwari Srimati Radharani Ki, her Shringar, her ornaments ki. She Maya Purdam ki. She she Gorni Tai ki. She Krishna Sankirtan yake ki. Nitai Gor Pemanandi. <coughs> Jay Jay Sisi Radhe.